Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nark. Welcome along to the Malaysian Grand Prix. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. But without further ado, let's jump in. And yeah, Malaysia wasn't a great waste for me, I'll be honest. Uh, we're in here on the track acclimatization test, uh, kicking things off. And um, we did manage to get in the green there with a 300. Uh, no, we didn't score 300. I've got 390 or 80 something. Sorry, it's really hard to see on my preview window. I do apologize if I get like times and things wrong when I'm looking at these details. Um, but then we went on to um, the race pace, and it was actually a wet session from there on in. Uh, as you can see here, we really struggled there on the intermediates, and we spun. Um, the following session, though, we went out, and um, yeah, it was dry again, but we were just really struggling. I just didn't seem to be able to put a lap together. The car felt really unbalanced. It was really un unstable. And um, as you can see, we're just sort of all over the place. It's, uh, we just got loads and loads of understeer and um, really, really struggling through the practice sessions. Um, just, yeah, just constantly on the power too early, spinning up the back tires and um, just too much to oversteer. So, um, yeah, I kind of got the vibe from this um, this session right here, uh, the practice that I, it wasn't going to be a good Grand Prix for me um, at all. I um, was really, really struggling. But... Um, now we were carrying on. We're continuing to, you know, try and do something. But you know, even on the slow corners, it just spun up. I really don't know what was wrong with the setup at all. But um, yeah, really, really struggling as we try and do qualifying. And yeah, even the qualifying pace is just awful. We got three consistent laps together, but you know, we're still saying that we're going to be twentieth in qualifying. So um, not really expecting great things out of the Malaysian Grand Prix. Um, and uh, yeah, we're taking a nice little excursion over the corner before hitting the gravel, and it's just you know it was just off after off after off, and um, there was a few like barrier moments as well. And then I changed the camera to like out of cockpit mode because I was really struggling. I thought just maybe you know I couldn't see the corners early enough. So um, yeah, but that again didn't really seem to make much difference. Uh, looking at the graphic there though, I mean tire wear was you know quite high. Uh, I don't know if that's just because of my incidents or what, or if we were just being really heavy on the, the super softs here. But, um, yeah, I mean, here, the tyres are just too warm, and that's never a good thing. It's just going to cause you to spin out and um, do this. So, yeah, an absolutely dreadful practice session for the Malaysian Grand Prix. Um, like I said, not really expecting a lot for qualifying, as uh, we're still in practice here. And, again, oversteer and towards the barriers. I did manage to keep it out of the barriers for a lot of the time, which was positive. Um, so it's nothing worse than just keep wrecking your wings and having to lose the time while the team repair it. But, um, yeah, just, just not very good at all. Um, I did go back to cockpit view, though, because I didn't really feel any benefit from being on the sort of um, airbox camera here. But I think this is probably going to be the end of our practice run. Oh no, I thought I stuffed it into the barrier again. I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah. It's more of the same, really. More of the same. I just could not find a good setup for Malaysia uh, in this practice session at all. And I spent a lot of time, and I mean a lot of time, um, in this practice just trying to um, get something um, good. I kept coming in, going out again, just not even bothering with the practice um, sort of sessions and things, just trying to run it um, as best as I could, but um, again, you know, kind of lose it on that corner. It's kind of kind of a tricky corner because normally you like to break before uh, you turn in, but uh, that one's quite awkward. Anyway, this is qualifying and it was a wet session, so that kind of filled me with a bit of false hope, I guess, thinking that we've been really rubbish on the um, dry tyres, maybe on the wet tyres we can do something else as we come across the line for lap two. It was a 155, uh, which was only good enough for 16th at the time, so... Um, yeah, that wasn't particularly great. The session did dry out a little bit, though. And um, right at the end, we got out on the intermediates. And we were like the last one to cross the line um, in this session. So let's have a look to see what we can do here. This is the, like the one and only lap on the intermediate tyres as well. So uh, already we're coming up to like three and a half, three, three and a half seconds up on our previous time. But we are like right at the bottom of the order here. We're down in 18th position. So, um, as we come into this corner where we've struggled at so much all weekend, and, um, yeah, we just rear puncher, and that was the end of our session. So, I was just like, you know what, we've had a rubbish qualifying, 
We're starting at the back anyway. Let's just take some new components and hopefully by taking the components here where we're having a rubbish session, um, this will now see us through to the um, end of the season. So that was my mentality here. Hopefully, um, you know, everything we've got here will see us through and uh, we won't have to take any further penalties later on in the season. The gearbox has sorted itself out because of the durability uh, upgrades we've applied. But anyway, let's get over to the grid with Crofty. Let's take a look at how the cars line up. Kimi Raikkonen's perfect lap yesterday sees him start from pole position, and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Ricardo, Massa, Roman Grosjean, and Hulkenberg, Kvyat, Vettel, Stroll, and Esteban Ocon, Sainz, Alonso, Lewis Hamilton, and Palmer, Van Dorn, Perez, Marcus Ericsson, and Pascal Wehrlein. A Haas and Max Verstappen completes the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. So despite the monumental penalties we have taken in this, Max Verstappen still decides he's going to take more and um, starts in 20th place. So we're not in last place, last position here as we come and line up on the grid at the end of the formation. I'm just having a look around, something I've not really done before. Anyway, the lights are on. It's five red lights. And away we go for the Malaysian Grand Prix. And... Um, Got a pretty nice start here. Um, we're alongside Verline at the moment as we overtake him. Um, we're not really being challenged from behind via Verstappen as we dive down the inside into turn one alongside Jolie and Palmer. But um, we let him sort of go. We've got Perez uh, and Ericsson on our outside here as we try to give them space. We've just been tagged a little there by Perez as he makes his way through. Uh, but we're trying to drag racing him up here to the end of the first sector. And try and put one down the inside, but um, no, Perez has is, is got the, the the speed there to carry the position through. So, um, not too bad. We made three positions up in that first first stint. We've got Ericsson behind us as well, which is, is good in a way, because it means we're not going to be under pressure from Max Verstappen too much um, in the opening stages of the race. But um, maybe that will allow us to sort of, you know, get into a bit of a groove. Not that we found one at the minute or weekend in the, around this, session, this track. But um, maybe we can get into a bit of a groove and try and build a bit of a lead as we, we turn in way too early there. Um, so, um, yeah. No, we're uh, settling down. Uh, not really making any inroads on Perez uh, as such. And um, got a little bit of a gap to Ericsson, not too much. But we're coming around here onto the back straight towards the end of lap one. At least we managed to keep it on the track for the entire of the first lap, which is which is a positive thing um, and a lot better than what we're doing in practice but we are starting to build a bit of a, a gap now between us and Ericsson as we come around the final corner here and over the line to finish the first lap so we have a 1.5 second gap over Ericsson after the at the end of lap one um, and we're of, we're obviously on the slower tire, as you may have noticed. I didn't say this at the beginning. We, we're doing a, the alternate strategy like we have done in a few races before. So we're going to run the soft tire, the slower tire for a start, and then switch on to the super softs later on the race when we've got a bit less fuel. And um, we can maybe make some more inroads on that. But anyway, let's look at the start again. Like I say, it was a pretty clean start. Nice little getaway. Didn't really challenge too much in the opening stint as Verstappen tries to get alongside the Sauber there. And um, we duck down into the inside, heading around turn one. And alongside um, the Sauber there, and Perez comes around the outside of both of us. He has the inside line. We try and get the power down, and he's just driven straight into the side of us on his way through there, Perez. Um, but thankfully, there was no damage to myself or any of the cars around us. And that's kind of like how the first corner shaped out, looking at it from the TV. The, the Sauber tried to come back at us, but there just was not enough speed and enough room there for him. So... Um, Kimi Raikkonen is out of the race on lap three. He set the fastest lap. I think he was actually leading potentially for a little bit. But um, yeah, just around this corner here, you'll see his car is parked at the side of the racetrack. Um, so yeah, that promotes us up to P14. As we um, have a look at a replay of that, and you see Verstappen was right on the back of me. He was closing up. He got past the, the train of cars behind me. But just to come for turn four, there is um, Kimi Raikkonen's stricken Ferrari at the side of the track right there. But um, yeah. We're feeling immense pressure at the moment 
from Max Verstappen as we come to the end of lap three. He has got the DRS. He's alongside me, and I'm not even going to challenge it too much. Lee, take a wide line through there. I was thinking about trying to get the cut back, but I just didn't have the grip and the traction to um, get too much of a good exit down there. Try and pick up the slipstream a little bit, but uh, Max with um, seems to have a lot more engine power than myself, and he's just gone. He's gone down the road, and... Um, not a bad thing like I say um, we just we haven't got the power here to um, compete with Verstappen considering we've been very unstable during practice it was um, inevitable that he was going to come past as he's just flying off into the distance now on the super soft tires as well um, as we take another look at that as we come through to the final bit here just before the back straight he is weaving and bobbing or all around as he gets a brilliant exit around there we may have unintentionally like blocked his line a little bit but um, yeah, with the DRS, it was never really in doubt as he heads off down the inside into the braking zone, leaving plenty of room around the outside. And, um, yeah, the, the, the cutback didn't really work for me as um, I think it's just the, the difference in tyres. He's done, just on the much faster tyres. Uh, anyway, moving on now to lap five. And uh, you'll see we've built quite a nice little gap to Ericsson. Uh, although we went massively wide in that corner there. But, um, yeah, we're five seconds behind Verstappen. Five and a half seconds, and we've got a good, uh, I think it's three and a half second gap to Ericsson. So, um, you know, we have settled down into a groove, and um, things are looking quite nice at the minute. Quite nice. We've managed to keep it on the track, which is always a bonus. Lap six, as we come around the final corner, the cars are starting to come into the pits now. So we're actually going to gain some positions here. There's quite a lot of cars in the, pack, in the pits, actually, including my teammate. Um, but that actually promotes us up to a P7 right now so now is the time where i need to really sort of like buckle down and make the most of the end of the uh, soft tire life and um hopefully we can make some good progress so that by the time we make our pit stop we're not too far behind any other cars and um who knows we may even be able to make the tail end of the points so whatever gremlins we had in the practice seem to have been um forgotten about and seem to have um have gone now as we come to the end of lap seven and we're actually going to head into the pits so we're going to have a full seven laps of running here on the um, super soft tyres as we uh, come in. I'm still not really aggressive enough on the pit line. I'm just so worried that I'm going to pick up a penalty from like speed in the pit lane. So I'm very, very tentative. I, I do know that I need to really work on my pit entries. But um, yeah, we're going to swing into the pits here. Hopefully the guys will give us a good stop. It is 2.8, so not bad, not the best. But um, we get out ahead of the Sauber, which is nice. But, uh, yeah, we've not really made any gains there during the pit stop phase then. So we're still in position f p f sorry position 15 um, behind Jolie and Palmer. But now on the faster tyre, hopefully we can um, start making some, some ground on these guys because everybody else seems to be on the soft tyre. So, um, yeah, this is, this is the time where we just need to get some nice consistent laps in and see what we can do. As you can see here, we're on lap uh, 11, and we, we are we are making ground on them. We just set our fastest lap of the race as well, a 139.0, and um, the gap has come down quite nicely. You can see them on the on the radar there that we have made inroads. And um, over the next few laps, I do get very, very close, and I when I looked back at the replay, it seems that there was a, a slow car. I think Massa was at the, the head of this train of cars in front of me right here. And he was going very, very slow, and that really, really helped me to close in on these guys um, and make some progress. You see, coming in the middle of lap 12, and we are now right on the back of Jolie and Palmer. So with a little two and a, two and a bit laps to go, this is still looking good. There is, a, there is a good five, six, seven, eight cars there that we can all potentially, you know, get past if we uh, get a good opportunity. So um, lap 13 here. Going into turn one, we're going to try and go around the outside of Jolie and Palmer. If we can, we can't, though. We have to slam on the anchors really quickly, unfortunately. But, um, no, the opportunity looks like it is going to present itself. And later on, on lap 13, you see here the fast double right-hander here. Everybody was really so I had to really slam on the brakes. They're going really, really slow. Massa is really holding this group of cars up, as a few of them have got past. But we're going to dive down the inside here, past Palmer. Past Kvyat, not quite. We do bang wheels with Kvyat, so I apologise for that. Palmer tries to come back at us, but we, we close the door. But, um, yeah. Um, I think we're going to be in a good position as we come down the back straight here. Hopefully with a bit of DRS and uh, maybe some rich fuel mix to um, get past Kvyat here. As um, a nice good exit is all we need. I think we've got that. That's a pretty good, nice, tidy line 
as we um, jump on the back of here. We are gaining, 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 gaining. And I think it's going to be a slam dunk into the final corner. It is, as he kind of cuts back towards us. But um, again, we managed to escape that damage. And now we're right on the back of Verstappen. Again, with the DRS, with the rich mix, it's going to be three abreast, I think, going into turn one. As we swing in right into the inside, we're going to have to be really late on the brakes here. And there's contact between myself and Verstappen. We've actually got some damage to the front wing. But um, we've got past them both. Um, but, um, yeah, I think... It, be, it was the end of the race, and I was just being really, really aggressive, and I think I was probably at fault for that. As we um, have a look at the replay of all this this part again, this is um, up at the back of Palmer here, coming towards the end of the um, second sector as we dive down the inside. We're way in front of Palmer, and then he just sort of tags our rear wheel and then comes at us again. So, um, yeah, that was the um, little bit of contact between myself and Palmer, but now we're going to have a look at the action on the start finish straight there where we was going three abreast are we? Yeah, so this is the exit from the final corner as we pass Kvyat And yeah, Lance Stroll had just got past Massa at that point But yeah, Massa was going very very slowly throughout the, the last sort of like two or three laps or so So yeah, this is the onboard as we head on to the inside and yeah, I, I don't really know. Max sort of turned in before I'd even started turning um, from the outside there. And I think I may have locked up a front as we go back on board with us here. Let's see. Yeah, I just locked up the front right a little bit and couldn't turn in um, early enough. And I think that caused the contact between myself and Max. As we look at it on board from Verstappen's point of view, he pulls alongside Massa. And then as you see from his wing mirrors, we are alongside him. I mean, in fairness, Verstappen was ahead of us um, at the point at the time. So um, he probably didn't expect us to come so far back. But it was, with it being the last lap, I just wanted to go for the opportunity as aggressive as it was. And we watch it now from on board of Massa. And yeah, we, just came, we, did, we came from a long way back. And um, I think that wasn't my fault. I was just being far too aggressive. But and Max actually lost the, the position there to Kvyat as well. So... Um, yeah, he didn't only lose one, he lost two positions. But um, Valtteri Bottas has won the race as we come down the back straight for the final time, round the final corner. And it's a P11, and I'm going to take that. P11 is a very good result, considering in practice, we couldn't even string a couple of laps together and we were spinning all over the place. So, yeah, I am happy today with that P11 finish. So, looking at the standings for the race, it was a teammate... Roman Grosjean, congratulations to him and his third place finish. But Valtteri Bottas won the race with Sebastian Vettel in second. And Grosjean in third, bringing some solid points home for the Haas team. Uh, Lewis Hamilton was in fourth. I think he's leading the championship with myself in 11th position. So looking at the uh, driver standings, Lewis Hamilton retains his top spot, but only by 11 points over teammate Valtteri Bottas. Kimi Raikkonen loses out, though. He's 21 points behind now with his non-finish we remain in 7th place ahead of Sergio Perez only by 2 points. But our teammate Roman Grosjean moves up to ninth position now with his good points haul. And he is only 8 points behind us in ninth position. Looking at the constructors and Renault and Williams swap places. So Renault made a um, some points gains in today's race. So congratulations to them. But everyone else is in sort of solid grounds where they are. Um, nobody else moving or... Up or down the positions. Mercedes still have a 55-point lead over Ferrari. And then it's 220 points ahead of Red Bull Racing. Uh, we hold a solid fourth position, though. So um, hopefully we can hang on to this for the rest of the season, which would be really, really good for the team. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll be back real soon with the Japanese Grand Prix. But until next time, I've been Ock. You've been awesome. Happy gaming.